Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video, we are going to talk briefly about watersheds. Now to begin, what is a watershed? And this might be your first image in your brain, but this is not true. It's not a shed filled with water or floating on water. Instead, a watershed is an area of land that all drains to a particular location or a particular point. Now there are several characteristics or things that are used to help classify a watershed and we'll go through those one at a time. The first characteristic of a watershed is the area and the area reflects how much water can be collected and drained to a single location. The second characteristic is looking at the length of the watershed. And this is really considered the general flow path from the headwaters region all the way down to the drain, which typically leads to the ocean. The next characteristic would be the slope, and this really determines how fast that water is moving, and that would also be considered the velocity of overland flow. Now, if a watershed has a larger slope, that means the water's moving faster and there's potential for increased erosion. The next main characteristic of a watershed depends upon the soil. Now, as we learned previously in this unit, different soils enable a different characteristic of growth in a particular location. And this determines everything from the primary productivity all the way to what type of human use there is on that landscape. So if we remember, soils that have a higher clay content tend to have lower porosity and permeability. So these types of soils would have a different characteristic in their watershed than something that has a high sand content. Another characteristic of a watershed would be vegetation type. And again, this ties back into the soils because certain locations are able to have more vegetation. Now within a watershed, if you have more vegetation in a particular location, that means that the landscape or the soil is a lot more stabilized and that reduces our chances of having erosion. Vegetation also influences the amount of sunlight that is reaching the water surface, so this influences water temperature. So having a tree canopy or a shrub canopy over that actual water surface will reduce that water temperature. And additionally, having some vegetation and tree litter helps to protect that soil from erosion, from both rainfall and from human activities. And finally, the last characteristic of a watershed would be the divides. Now these are the ridges or the boundaries around the outside of the watershed that prevent the water from flowing out of the watershed into a different direction or a different drainage basin. So the ridges or the divides really define the boundaries of that watershed. So there's several different categories or classifications of watersheds. The first one would be an agricultural dominated watershed. Now these have some potential for increased erosion if you have more barren ground or exposed soil. There's also an increased chance of having compaction from having heavy equipment move across the soil, and that really decreases the amount of infiltration, which is the amount of water that can seep into the soil. Additionally, in high agricultural areas, streams tend to be more channelized, and this means that humans have gone through and they dig these drainage ditches to try to put the water where they want it and not through places that could be damaging to their crops. Now, not all farmers are going to cause significant damage to the land. However, large agricultural watersheds tend to have an increased chance of these particular impacts. The second type of classification we're looking at is an urban watershed. Now, urban watersheds tend to have more impermeable surfaces. So that means the water is being forced across that surface, across those stabilized or hardened surfaces such as asphalt and concrete. Because the water is not able to infiltrate into the soil very easily, there is a higher chance for sudden flooding in these urban watersheds. The next type of watershed would be a mountainous watershed. These tend to have very steep 
gradients or slopes, they tend to have less porous soil because of the rocky nature of mountains, which also means there's less infiltration and more runoff. Now these mountainous watersheds are extremely important in terms of freshwater supplies for many western communities in the United States. However, because these seem these tend to have very determined boundaries due to the mountain ridges and these high levels of runoff, they are particularly vulnerable to flooding in the downstream areas. The next type would be forest watersheds. Now these have a whole bunch of evapotranspiration coming out of all of the vegetation and the soils in forests tend to have high levels of infiltration because of all the root structures of the plants that allow a lot of that water to slowly seep into the soil. Because of this stabilization from the roots of the plants and all of this infiltration, these forest watersheds tend to have low levels of runoff and erosion. However, when humans go in and clear cut parts of the forest and do some disturbance, these can have some pretty significant impacts. The next type of watershed would be a desert watershed. Now, a lot of times people tend to have a hard time conceptualizing what a desert watershed looks like because there is very little rainfall and there is very little stream development. However, Deserts do experience these wet seasons where they have that sudden plant growth that results from the rainy seasons. These watersheds tend to have very sandy and porous soil, which allows the water to move through it very quickly. However, because there's not very much rainfall in this desert environment, there is very little groundwater recharge in this desert um, watershed. The final one would be a coastal watershed. Now, coastal watersheds tend to have high levels of rainfall, but they don't really have a lot of channel control. So coastal watersheds have this variable path that the streams can take to reach that ocean. They also tend to have a very high water table, which can lead to this phenomena called saltwater intrusion. And this happens because as you can see in the diagram at the bottom left of your screen, the seawater does come in underneath the shoreline and is essentially being kept out of that freshwater water table by the movement of that freshwater towards the ocean. However, if you put a high capacity well too close to that sea or the shoreline and you're piping more water out of that well that is normally coming in from that freshwater environment, you can actually start pulling that salt water in from the ocean and that can lead to some pretty terrible issues with your drinking water quality. Our next watershed would be a wetland. Now wetlands are one of my favorite ecosystems and in a wetland it makes sense that water is not a limiting factor. In fact, a wetland is a section of land that is fully saturated with water for at least a part of the year. So this could be a vernal wetland that is only completely saturated in the spring or it could be a perennial wetland that's saturated all year long. Now, wetlands tend to have high levels of rainfall, but they also tend to have high levels of runoff. And this is because they act as these sponges and they, as soon as there's a rainfall event, they absorb all of this water and then slowly release it back. So that water is constantly moving throughout that wetland environment. And finally, our last category of watershed would be these mixed watersheds. And in fact, mixed watersheds are the norm. They are not the exception. So if we look at a large watershed basin and think of the Mississippi River watershed basin that takes up about half of the United States, you have large urban areas, you have large agricultural areas, you have large wetlands and coastal areas, and all of these different localities drain into that same watershed. So in summary, you need to know the characteristics of a watershed that are defined as area, length, slope, soil, vegetation types, and divides with the adjoining watersheds. You also need to know a little bit about some of these categories of watersheds. Please send me your questions here at the end, and I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.